Business head Florings is here. Let's ask him what is the review about the ASTEC 2015 Green Lamp booth. So, what are the customers asking for this year? Well, first of all, they are very surprised that there is somebody who is making flooring in India. Well, this is the first plant in the country which uh, we have set up uh, in the last one year to make uh, engineered wood flooring for the first time in India. And that is what I think they are excited about. And what do you think the next coming year is looking like? Well, it has to be better than this year, definitely. And we have just started. And I think, I mean, this has helped us into promoting the brand quite well, into making it more aware among the people. And we are hoping more and more business to come next year. Uh, how's the footfall at AIS 2015? Uh, yesterday, I think we were counting about 3,000 people came to our stall. Day before yesterday, about 2,500. I think it's a good number of people coming in. So appreciations all around. Everybody is just appreciating Green Lamb. What are you saying? That what are the suggestions for the products to get met better? Well, I work for Green Lamb, and I'm very proud when people are saying that they are appreciating Green Lamb. I fully appreciate our efforts, what we have done. I think we have done it in the right way, and we are going to improve upon it as it goes. Since how many years are you associated with Green Lamb? I joined Green Lamb about two years ago. First as a consultant uh, to set up the plant and then as a full-time uh, business head for selling the product. And I'm, I feel very, very invigorated because it's a young, smart company and helps you to do a good job. So let's hear it from you that Green Lamb is the best. Yes? I'm not being paid for this, but Green Lamb is the best. <laughs>
its values. The values that give us the motivation and vision to lead ahead with. Trust, believe your beliefs, test them, perform to win. Performance, push forward, take risks, create the impossible. Speed and agility, be quick, think fast, execute even faster. Teamwork, build relationships, pursue excellence, lead to succeed. Learning, be curious, explore, experiment more. We now present to you the all-new Greenland Industries Limited. Transforming spaces, enriching lives. With an experience of 20 years of beautifying spaces, Greenland Industries Limited offers one of the largest surfacing solution portfolios that includes high-pressure laminates, compact sturdo and decorative veneers. Exploring more ways to beautify the world. One of the largest producers of laminates in the world. We have an annual capacity of over 10 million sheets for laminates originating out of our state-of-the-art plants. It is continuously innovating and constantly adding new products. Exploring more ways to beautify the world. While our natural decorative veneers astonish everybody with 4.2 million square meters installed capacity, we have now launched our first engineered wooden flooring brand with the astounding capacity of 1 million square meters, facilitating us to give you a wide range of brands such as Greenlam Laminates, Clads, Sturdo and Mikasa. With a strong global network, Greenland Industries Limited is committed to provide international quality products to its customers through more than 12,000 distributors, dealers, sub-dealers and retailers. With a valued experience of over two decades, Greenland Industries has the significant part of the global market and remains the most preferred choice for architects, interior designers and the discerning consumers alike. A wider reach, a wider vision has taken the company beyond Asian roots, establishing Greenland Industries Limited as a promising and preferred brand globally. Present in over 100 countries, a strong global distribution network has 2,500 employees to cater to the global requirements. Today, Greenland Industries has to its credit the designation of being Asia's largest and the world's third largest laminate brand, along with the recognition of being the largest exporter of laminates in Asia for the last four years. But the success of Greenland Industries Limited doesn't lie in how vast its world is. It lies in how well it beautifies your world.
history enunciates one fact time and again that grandeur and magnificence rest outwards and later inwards. Facades of monuments, palaces, palatial venues enchant you with their magnetic charisma. Trending in recent times, flaunting exteriors are fast replacing the skylines the world over. As always, it is the first impression that creates the last. Be it your offices, homes, corporate towers, shopping malls that look simply a A very, very good afternoon. I request everybody to please be seated for a session by Mr. Peter Clemen. Requesting all of you to please be seated. And all the people who are at the back of the counter, please come here because this is something special coming up, some source of knowledge for everybody here. Please, I request all of you to please be here. Please be seated. Presentation last day in Mumbai. I had so many other presentations. You can go through this. Just have a look on the back side. Just yeah, take yeah. One and just explain. Yeah. Uh, whatever you say, just be confident in that. Mm -hmm. Just have a look. Mm -hmm. If four points are there, explain two points. Once again, I request everybody to please be here for a session by Mr. Peter Clement. An expert here all the way from Austria, so I'm sure you don't want to miss the important information and some knowledge. We would request all of you to please be here to attend this special session organized just and just for you. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. No. Fifteen thirty starting. 
I request everybody to please be seated for this special session. If you're looking forward to gather some knowledge regarding interiors, architecture, facades, installation, please be here. A very, very good afternoon. I welcome you all to Green Lamb. You are all today here at Ace Tech 2015. We have a special session here by Mr. Peter Clement, facade expert and consultant from Austria. Specialized in technical support and solutions for ventilated facades cleaning with compact laminates. He would be taking a special session on practices in facades installation. So I request all of you to please give a round of applause and welcome Mr. Peter. Thank you. Sir, a very, very warm welcome. Still start. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome you to uh, ASTECH Daily. Welcome on Green Lamp booth, and uh, it's quite fine to have so many people here for the presentation. It's a little bit early, starting 15.30. I think it's another five minutes time. Shall we wait for somebody? Or? Okay. <coughs> this one. So once again, welcome to Green Lamp booth. I want to give you a short explanation uh, about the technical features of facade substructure nowadays uh, on the world market and special situation on the Indian market. Uh, the certain and ventilated facade. Uh, in principle, it's a century old tradition. Uh, since long time, it's the clapboard threading, which is used in the mountains in the middle of Europe uh, since the 15th century. It gives a very high building protection because it covers the base wall of the building uh, and it protects from the weather situation. Rain, ice, snow and sun. So, uh, we have due to a, a flexible substructure, we have uh, numerous design options how to cover the facade. We can use big size panels, we can cut them to size, we can cover a square meter of up to four square meter with one panel in a very fast way. The material is in a very high quality. It is weather resistant, it is UV protected, shock proof uh, and scratch resistant. And we have a lot of economical advantages. Wood as a substructure and building material is known since about 1500. Has light weight, is very cheap to get, but the problematic torsion for the substructure. So it cannot be used on the Indian market because we did not get a three meter slates straight one. Availability is not available. On the local market situation, is practically only aluminum substructure used and no wood substructure. The history, ventilated facade cladding materials. Since 1500, we used the clapboard cladding in very small size. Since 1970, it started with glass and metal in medium size panels. Since 1980, we built the first compact laminate facades in Europe as cladding material. At this time, it was not such a big knowledge about the UV protection as we have nowadays. The local market situation, the ventilated facade market is very small, but it still has an enormous potential. Why we should use facade cladding system? It's quite easy. Panels only, is not a facade cladding. We need a system, we need a substructure, we need a panel, 
and we need materials to keep the whole the panel in position on the wall. So the panels only will not work without the substructure. They will not satisfy our customers because if you put them directly to the wall, they try to bend. The material of compact is made of paper sheets and paper is made of wood. If you put wood to the water on one side, the panel will bend or the wood will bend. So we have the same situation uh, with a compact laminate panel. So what we need is a substructure to get front and reverse side the same weather situation. Green lamp jets are the only visible part of a facade system. We will show you how your facade cladding becomes successful and an investment for the future of your building because we calculate a facade cladding nowadays 30 to 40 years. Greenland Clads will give a 10 years guarantee. The requirement on ventilated facade cladding systems is realization first of the architectural ideas. The architects bring everything to paper, but we have to find out how we do really install it. Some ideas from overseas. Straight project, big projects with a uh, facade area of up to 150, 180,000 square meter in one project are realized nowadays. So here see glass and alu carbon facade cladings. Uh, architects want a big range of decors, want normally a very big panel size. Physically, weather protection for dry walls, thermal insulation for summer and winter, sound insulation and fire protection. The panels must be heavy inflammable. Green lamp supplies a PS1 D0 quality for the facade cladding. On the local market, there is principally no thermal and sound insulation used. The panels are fixed directly only on aluminum substructure. What we do on the world market, we have the wall, which is here number one, marked with number one. Then what we do, what is very easy, uh, to give additional thermal insulation, which also gives a sound insulation to the building. The ventilation gap between the substructure and the panel should reach a minimum of three centimeter. And then at least we have the visible part, which is the facade panel. The facade panel gives at first protection against ultraviolet radiation and directly heat to the building. Also, the humidity in rain is cut off with 99%. A maximum of 1% reaches the wall through the horizontal open gap. Even we are able uh, to close this open gap, which is nowadays 6 mm. It's also against, uh, protection against fire, lightning strike and sound. Today's state of the art is aluminum substructure, which are lightweight, free of corrosion, and there are a lot of different systems available. Visible or invisible fixing. Invisible fixing is not so easy uh, on the Indian market because, uh, for example, if we fix with glue, we need a maximum temperature of 35 degrees and a maximum humidity of 50%. On the local, local market situation, there are no professional systems available. It's more or, li or less self-made systems. Standard installation view, what is done nowadays? We have the wall with wall brackets. Wall brackets are available in different sizes. With this kind of wall brackets, we can adjust all profiles 40 millimeter. So we compensate uneven walls with the system. Wall brackets are available from 40 up to 700 millimeter width. So even 
if we have to uh, sorry even if the, we have to cover a window section we can go in front up to 700 millimeter thermal insulation can be done from 100 up to 150 millimeter which gives a, a very big uh, saving in heating and cooling costs of the building what we do we work with the wall brackets and we use L profile in the middle of the panel with a minimum thickness of 1.8 millimeter and a length of 3 millimeter and for the gap we use T profiles so the adjustment is 40 millimeter in the wall bracket even if the, if the profile is set up and leveled it is fixed with two stainless steel screws after this the panel can be fixed with rivets or glued to the substructure there are different kinds of wall brackets made of steel or made of aluminium but all have the possibility to compensate a 40 millimeter uh, setup of the profile here we see the complete system what we did we delivered the wall brackets including a thermal insulation against the wall we have towels which looks like including uh, the washer so we have no direct connect no connection between the screw and the uh, aluminium uh, wall bracket so we have also no corrosion between steel and aluminium which is one very dangerous part nowadays on the Indian market because they use box profiles and fix it with steel screws another possibility for uh, lap siding facades is used a special profile but in principle there is no need on the local market so here we show some possibilities and you see how we compensate with one type of wall bracket up to 40 millimeter uneven walls machining of the panels uh, machining of the panels is done sorry either in the factory panels can be can be uh, cut to size professional on uh, industrial machines or at the site with hand circular saw with a guiding rail panels can be drilled with different kind of, of drills we have a VHM drill uh, which gives 8.5 millimeter drill for the sliding point uh, we have a step drill which drills 5.1 millimeter centralized in the substructure and 8.5 millimeter in the panel in one step and we have a centralized drill device if we have the 8.5 millimeter drilled at the, at the uh, workshop and we drill the 5.1 millimeter at the site machining routing can be done with standard hand routers rivet setting with rivet setting machine and a special mouse piece which secures a working sliding point with this machine and the loading time of 20 minutes we can set up to 2000 rivets even the rivets are supplied by Greenlam with one panel come up to 70 rivets I want to show you some GLETS projects on the Indian home market in city Agra different kinds wood decors are very popular on the Indian market so you see the panels are used for the facade cladding and also for door cladding different colors can be mixed of course most of these projects were done in the last two to three years what you can see on the Indian market most of the panels are cut to lines 
on the European market, there are more used full-size panels to cover a big area, but here in India is mostly used for private objects. Sheets can also be used for balcony cladding. Doors, they can be carved and, and uh, perforated also. Here's a very nice project where they did the company graving on the compact. Greenlam also delivers worldwide both from Europe in truck loads or in container loads. Special loading, even the young guys start working in Austria. Projects in Russia, also Greenland clads, where the temperature goes down to minus 40 degrees and plus 80 degrees measured on the wall in summertime. This is a project from Russia. In exterior, Greenland Clets offered five solid colors, 12 wood textures, and six abstract decors. Perfect size, the 10 feet covers a full story height. Thickness, six, eight, and 10 millimeter available. Greenland offers a cut to size service, even gives the rivets, tools on request, technical support at site, and we have a well-trained team for our customers. And all our knowledge to create a perfect project in cooperation with our partners. We invite you to see reality of Greenland booths. Greenland clads, this was the last facade cladding done on Mumbai stand. Here in Delhi, it's a little bit different. But we hope you enjoy our claddings. Lab sliding. Thank you very much to take your time. Thank you for the great knowledge share and we want to thank Mr. Peter Clement for the views that has given to you. Please give a round of applause for Mr. Peter who came all the way from Austria to share his views. Thank you so much, sir. I think you all want to know the emerging trends in interiors. So the next session that we have is by Ms. Sonali Bhagwati, who is the president of DPA. So please be seated here. At 4 o'clock, we will have a special session on emerging trends in interiors. Established way back in 2009, this facility boasts of capacities exceeding 1 million square meters of exterior grade compact laminate panels per annum. Rolling out an ultra-modern revolutionary exterior cladding solution in myriad hues and designs, we present to you the Green Lamb Clads, the innovative and revolutionary way of beautifying your facades like never before. And making this possible is our superior GLE technology that ensures precision, perfection and performance. Integrating world-class technologies, harnessing the best of human resource and state-of-the-art R&D, Green Lamb Clads are designed to withstand any vagary of nature year after year and are stamped with a seal of assurance that guarantees 10 years of minimum life. The groundbreaking GLE technology adds on to the superiority of Green Lamb Clads 
such as excellent UV performance that prevents the exteriors from color fading over time. Its high quality imported exterior grade and specialized decor paper gives it a superb edge. So do its extreme light stable pigments and special chemicals and inks. Extreme weather stability makes it perfectly suited in extreme weather conditions ranging from as low as minus 80 degrees centigrade to as high as 180 degrees centigrade. A green and environment friendly product which retards heat externally and keeps the interiors relatively cooler resulting in almost 30% energy saving. Power of Green Lamb Innovations For they also have unique properties like fire retardant, dust and solvent resistant, exceptional chemical resistance, high anti-soiling properties, impact resistance and scratch resistance make green lamb clads one of its kind. Adding to this is the ease with which these panels can be cleaned. Resistance to corrosion, high anti-static property, frost resistance, anti-graffiti property and resistance to acid drains. Making green lamp clads an obvious choice for stunning exteriors. Let's take you through the most suggested installation process of green lamp clads step by step. Wall Survey We need to check the wall type first to ensure correct fastening process. For different walls like ash brick wall, hollow wall, red wall, MS wall, concrete wall, we need different processes for green lamp clad installation. Mark the vertical line for the frame. Start from the corner. Make parallel markings on the entire wall at regular distance of 600 millimeters. Use first dead load bracket on 300 millimeters from the ground for proper alignment of the wall. Use 10 mm fastener for fixing the brackets. MS brackets are of two types. Wind load brackets which take care of thermal expansion, heat expansion and earthquake resulting in overall facade protection and dead load brackets which transfer the load to wall which eventually is transferred to the earth thus protecting facade. These brackets should be of the size 85 mm in width, 50 mm in depth and 5 mm in thickness and should be placed at intervals of 1500 mm in vertical. Use second wind load brackets after the distance of 1500 mm from first brackets. Use third wind load brackets after 1500 mm from second brackets. After fixing of brackets, fix the aluminum box section in brackets with the help of SS nut bolts of diameter 10 mm. After fixing the first vertical frame, start second section at maximum distance of 600 mm. All framing will follow the same procedure. After framing is completed, check the bubble level of the frame, horizontally and vertically. After framing is completed, cut the sheet as per your requirement. Make a first drill hole on the sheet at a corner. Distance from the corner is 40 mm from top and 20 mm from side. Diameter of the drill is 5.1 mm. After first drill, 
Mark the distance for second drill. Maximum distance is 600 mm horizontally and vertically. Diameter of the other drill is 8.5 mm. Once all drill holes are completed, start fixing the sheet on the frame. To fix the rivet, you need to make a 5 mm drill in aluminum box section and fix it on the frame with the help of the rivets. After 5 mm drill, you may fix the sheet. You must leave 6 mm horizontal and vertical gaps between each panel. The structure is ready to rise, shine and remain tall for decades together. As Green Lamb ushers yet another revolution in offering the world a trusted, internationally benchmarked product that is superior, exclusive and environment friendly. Being Asia's leading laminate brand, Green Lamb remains ever committed to win your esteemed trust and faith, thus rightfully honoring your trust incessantly. For those drop-dead looks, so magnificent, so enamoring, welcome to the world of beautiful clads. Together, happy cladding. Who does not want a beautiful house? Who does not want a lovely office? And who does not want an industry or a commercial area which is totally comfortable but has all the amenities. So to know how to make your house beautiful, how to make your property look very fascinating, we have a special session at 4 o'clock on the emerging trends on interior designs. So everybody who is looking forward to something new, something innovative, please be here. आप सभी चाहते होंगे अपने घर को बहुत खूबसूरत बनाना अपने ऑफिस को बहुत अच्छा बहुत कंफर्टेबल बनाना सो इफ यू आर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड अगर आप सच में ऐसा चाहते हैं हमारा नेक्स्ट सेशन लेटेस्ट ट्रेंड्स के ऊपर है इंटीरियर्स और घर को खूबसूरत बनाने के ऊपर है सो प्लीज बी हियर टू अटेंड द स्पेशल सेशन in the dedication it takes to master a craft, to elevate it to a fine art. We believe in perfection, which is why we at Greenlam are proud to present to you Mikasa, India's first collection of real wood floors, crafted from exotic wood species like oak, walnut, myrtle and ash from around the world. Mikasa offers more than 100 unique products, making it the largest collection of engineered wood flooring in India. Every Mikasa plank showcases the elegance of real wood. 
engineered to perfection in a state-of-the-art plant using the most modern European practices. With a selection of inspiring designs, there are endless ways to adorn your floors. Mikasa floors are much more than just a beautiful surface. Every Mikasa floor is composed of three layers of wood, put together using the latest technology. Mikasa floors are engineered to provide stability, to withstand the effects of seasonal changes and foot traffic. They are joined using Plank Lock, a revolutionary technology that locks two planks together without glue to ensure that the planks never open up. They are very easy to install, remove and reinstall. Because Mikasa floors are pre-lacquered, they have a strong surface that is durable and long-lasting. And with warranties of up to 30 years, what you get in the end are not just beautiful floors, but floors that will bring joy for years to come. And we believe in beauty with a conscience, a reason why every bit of Mikasa wood is ethically sourced from the world over. No glue is used for installing the floors. Even the lacquers and stains are water-based and do not emit any VOCs after installation. It is just one of the many steps Mikasa takes to cherish wood, nature's most precious gift. Artistry through precision, perfection through passion. We present to you the fine art of flooring. Fantastic. Please give them a big round of applause. And now as we move on from the silver to the ultimate award, that's the gold award, please welcome. Gentlemen, please stay with us, the presenters of the awards, ladies too, ma'am too. Please welcome Mr. Goyal of Omax to join us on stage. Small Goyal, thank you for being with us here. For the moment we've been waiting for, the Design Wall Gold winner. The Design Wall Gold winner. The award color is gold and the winning entry uh, is... The winner is... Green. Green Lamb Industries Limited. So this year the gold goes to Green Lamb Industries. Congratulations Green Lamb. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, sir, in silence. Kitna sannata ki hoi bhai. Jor se. I think it's too cold to take back, right? Thank you so much, Ms. Gregorio. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for gracing this awards and making it a special award at this. We'd like to thank all our uh, finalists. We also like to thank all the participants and all the innovators. We have a businessman here who deals with different kinds of woods. So let us talk to him and ask him, what is Green Lamb? So, what do you want to say Green Lamb? Ke mein? Hello, Satsakal Ji. I have Green Lamb to use Green Lamb. It is a multinational brand. Hai. ते कोई हमने होटल में भी यूज की है सब अच्छा ब्रांड है आज हम एग्जीबिशन में आए हैं और हमने उनके पूछा कि कोई आप नया ब्रांड आपका आया तो दिखाओ इन्होंने हमने विनियर दिखाया जो रेडी है पॉलिश बिल्कुल उसमें पेंट का भी पेंटर का भी काम खत्म हो जाता है फिर वैसे भी वो जो क्वालिटी उन्होंने दी दी है पॉलिश में वो क्वालिटी पेंटर कभी ला ही नहीं सकता इसलिए बहुत अच्छा लगा एक इन्होंने कोई नया माइक आया जो स्टोन लुक है वो वो भी हमें अच्छा लगा मार्केट जब आएगा तो हम लगाएंगे पहले भी वो लगाया इनका माइक का विनियर भी वो लगाया होटल में रेजिडेंशियल प्रोजेक्ट में सो so, आपके कस्टमर्स क्या मांगते हैं बेसिकली जब आपके पास आते हैं व्हाट डू दे आस्क फॉर वो मांगते हैं ब्रांड ब्रांड हो अच्छा ब्रांड हो जो मार्केट में चल रहा है बस यही सो डू यू थिंक ग्रीन लैम इज अ बिग ब्रांड ब्रांड मल्टीनेशनल ब्रांड मल्टीनेशनल ब्रांड सो सर वी हैव समथिंग स्पेशल हियर एक सेल्फी खींचेंगे हम ग्रीन लैम के साथ और आपको एक गिफ्ट वाउचर मिलेगा सो प्लीज यूज योर फोन एंड क्लिक अ सेल्फी
businessman here who has been using green lamp since many years. Let us ask him what is green lamp. Sir, आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे green lamp के बारे में? मैं green lamp में last लगभग two years से एक authorized dealer की तरह काम कर रहा हूँ. But if I मैं सभी laminates को consider करूँ तो green lamp definitely एक innovative product है. इसके अंदर जो clads अभी recently I'm sure you enjoyed the session that Mr. Peter provided and submitted here. So now I would want to ask you all: Do you all look forward to something new in the interiors? आप सभी हमेशा सोचते होंगे हमारा घर बहुत खूबसूरत हो, कुछ नया हमेशा होता रहे. Is it right? Yeah, we look forward to uh, something new always in commercial, residential, or industrial. So now the next session that we have is by Miss Sonali Bhagwati, who is. president of design plus architecture private limited so let us welcome her with a round of applause please i request all of you ek baar zordar taaliyon ke sath unka swagat kare please thank you she is heading design plus an internationally recognized firm she has she is one of the 20 top architects in india and has earned prestigious scholarship in paris and numerous award throughout her career she would be discussing and presenting to you the topic emerging trends in interiors ma'am a very very warm welcome to you thank you thank you You downloaded it. Yeah. I it's okay. I know these glitches always happen. <laughs> You can run it through this only if you want. Yeah. You can run it through this. Only. Yeah, that was not a problem. Okay. 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 Which is the, this is the one forward, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. 
Uh, first of all, I need to thank uh, so and Parul for having me here and uh, talk to you all. Uh, it's, it's really a nice uh, coming together of the community, the fraternity, and I'm sure I'm going to be able to talk to you about a couple of things that concern us all, and I'm, I hope you enjoy it. So uh, I'm going to talk about, um, you see, this is a, a, it's an exhibition where uh, there is a lot of products, a lot of uh, materials for architecture, interior, building, landscape, uh, services, and everything that we as architects build and control. Um, a building that when we build or we create a campus, uh, it's all within a, a periphery that we control, the client controls, we design it the way we want with all the beautiful products that we see around us. And we make it function the way we want. The clients, the owners make it function the way they want. Uh, and what this is what we call the controlled environment, the micro environment. Uh, but what happens, so we have in any city, we have a series of micro environments. We have series of buildings, we have series of properties and land parcels which are developed by developers, by private owners, by home owners, and they're all your private areas which are, as I said, controlled very well. But what happens to all the area which is in between these private areas? What happens to the roads, the pavements, the parks, the gardens, the forests, uh, and all these areas which connect all these private areas? So these are the areas which we call the public domain. So we have the private domain and we have the public domain. Now, so what, what, uh, what I want to talk about today is not so much of the private domain which we all control, which we all know so much about, which we all design, but we want to talk about the public domain, which is actually nobody's, nobody's baby. It is something that we do not take ownership of. We do not uh, consider that we complain a lot about it, we think a lot about it, but we do not think that it is our job to talk about it, to think about it, to do even any, take any action about it. So that is the reason why the public domain today has become a space which is everybody's leftover, everybody's rubbish bin. Uh, whatever you don't want or you cannot do inside your property, you go and do outside your property. You do not know how to park your cars inside your property, so you try and use the road for it. You do not know, you cannot store garbage in your property, so you will put your garbage outside your property. Everything that you cannot do inside your property, you tend to do outside your property. And this is where we have started losing our public domain. And this is the public domain that I want to talk about today. Because we as a city, at least in Delhi, I remember as a child, uh, I used to walk to school, I used to cycle to school, we used to walk to the markets, and it was a very, very nice, friendly, walkable city. Today, we have forgotten how to walk in the city. We, in fact, when we want to walk, we have to drive. So I often joke that we drive to walk in Delhi. So we drive to a secure place where we can walk and then we get off from our cars and then we walk in a beautiful garden. Then we get back into our cars and we shut ourselves out from the uncouth, un sort of gainly public domain that is surrounding us till we get back into a private domain which is again controlled by us. And this is the concern that I want to address because it is not a concern as only as us as architects, it's a concern for all of us as citizens to how to regain our public domain today, you know. Now, I'm gonna talk about a project which is an attempt at regaining our public domain. It is a project which is done by the Delhi Urban Arts Commission and uh, they have created a hub which has started looking at a lot of city level projects uh, which is taking into account all the various concerns which are there 
at city level and trying to address them first study them and then trying to address them as a design intervention so this is one such project which is the green waste project okay now if you see delhi as a city i mean delhi as um, the national capital uh, we have uh, we have uh, some lot of nice green areas which is very unlike many other cities so delhi has naturally these three four ridges which are natural outcrops which are protected areas and we have a lot of other green areas if you see in this map over here uh, which are forest greens which are district parks which are small city level parks uh, so there is a very nice hierarchy of open green areas which exist in the city and that we are trying to address today as a part of this project now if you see delhi it's this today i mean parks and forests are cordoned off with very high walls uh, there is a complete disconnect of these nice parks from the urban tissue uh, while parks and forests remain isolated the pedestrian jostles for space in the jungle of vehicles and there is a dire need to connect the greens with active life and provide a circulation for the pedestrian so here the idea is that while we have so much green area why is our pedestrian still jostling for space with the cars and just li li living a very hazardous life so this is what we are trying to get away from and we want to see can we use our green areas to create a completely uh, alternate uh, pedestrian movement which takes pedestrians away from this this uh, horrible horrible sort of milieu and gives them a very nice secure seamless way to travel across parts of the city now this particular project really uh, refers to this area which is the south delhi ridge uh, where we have a series of green areas starting from tughlaqabad fort and the green area around it coming to the jahanpana forest and going up to the siri fort or panchil forest as it's called so we have taken this area as a area of study to see what can happen with it now when we see this area over here we we figure that you know there is a lot of green area and it is fragmented by roads and it is fragmented by urban development but the green areas the possibility of being connected at various places something over here something over here at this juncture at that juncture so there is a great possibility of connecting them and if we do manage to connect them can you imagine we could have a beautiful alternative road a beautiful alternative path for pedestrians which you could call from fort to fort which is from tughlaqabad fort to siri fort so it would it would give you a beautiful access through a major part of otherwise very congested south delhi now we have taken this area as a area of study uh some of the uh, parameters that this area has we have a nala over here we have some main roads going across we have a metro line which is coming on we have the ring road that is going through and we have a uh, sort of mid market residential areas up market residential areas and absolutely uh, low income group residential areas which are all surrounding this whole space so if we wanted if we could somehow connect these this green area and open up for people over here because what happens to all these green areas today is that it is used extensively only in the mornings you will see hundreds of people walking in the morning in all these areas but post 9:30 10 these areas are completely deserted so much so that you may not really want to go in there for lack of security 
Now, if these areas were more open to people and it invited people in and it created this alternative route, then it would be activated. It would be a space where you do not mind going. And that's the reason why we are looking at uh, two types of uh, things to make this whole project work. One is what we call the entrance nodes and the other is what we call the connecting nodes. Now, entrance nodes are places where you would try and get people into these areas. You know, whether it is here, 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 here. And the connecting nodes would be the ones where you are connecting these areas and trying to go from one green into another. So the two types of nodes that we needed to develop were the entrance nodes and the connecting nodes. And if this is done, if you see over here, uh, the entrance nodes, it forms the various entry points from the various colonies which are into these areas. It activates the entrances. You see, right now, a lot of these entrances exist and people do use them, but they are so uninviting. They are so sort of, um, they are not even noticeable at times. So what happens is that people who know about it use it and come out, but it has no integration with the urban fabric at all. So if we were to try and tie them up, you can see over here this sort of a pink line, how you could create a beautiful way which takes you halfway across South Delhi through one of the most congested, otherwise terrible for driving areas in an absolutely secure, green, calm, with birds around, and a completely different milieu. The connecting nodes would be, as I said, cre creating the connection between the various greens. Now, we have taken this one node, which is over here, at this point, which is between Jahapana and going into Panchil Forest, because this is where the main ring goes. This is where the main metro line is going to go, phase three metro line. So this is actually a very, very uh, important node, and that's why we've taken that as an area of study to see what can we do to try and make this node into a not only an active mode, a node, but also something that uh, helps the city, something that uh, brings in various aspects of the city and various uh, and connects the two green areas. So this is the space which, which you see over here, the Jahapana forest touches over here. The Masjid mode, there is a district park over here. And there is a road that exists over here, which has become defunct at the moment. There is an underpass that exists over here, which is defunct at the moment. And there is, of course, a metro line which is going through. And then when you cross over, there is, it goes into the green area of the uh, city fort or the Panchil forest. Now, if we take this, this entire area, which is, this is the very busy road, which is uh, where you t go to the, um, uh, this is the, your BRT, of course. And this is going to be where, where a metro station is coming. So this is actually a very, very um, important junction in South Delhi now. Now, this is how the area actually looks where we have some existing housing, a DDA housing. Um, this road right now has been, for what reason, I do not know, been made defunct. At some point, this road used to exist as a road that you could cut across and join the BRT. But at some point, about 10, 15 years ago, they, they just shut it off and they put a bus stand there. So what we are saying is that let that road not be a vehicular road. Let's look at the road as a pedestrian road. Uh, this will also help control all the encroachments which are happening in this area. There is already this area which has got encroached, which we are keeping out of our purview. There is a DDA park over here, which a lot of the residents use. And there is a one which is a metro station coming up over there. 
So one which is very important, a couple of things that we've tried to do here. One is trying starting with the metro. The metro needs to be integrated into the city. The problem with the metro nowadays, what's happening is that the metro runs the metro, which is run beautifully, but it is not competency to integrate with the city. And the authorities do not think metro is their purview, so nobody is integrating the metro with the city. As a result, every single metro outlet is becoming a roadblock, it's becoming a choking point for traffic. So one idea was to address this metro and how would the pickup and drop-off be? We use a part of this park in order to create the right drop-off pickup, uh, parking for uh, taxis, rickshaws, uh, private cars, and take care of that planning. From the metro, if you were to walk, we create a very nice colonnaded uh, walkway over here, and we come to this area, which is where one of the exits is forest. Now, this area of the Jahapana forest is actually like a blank end right now. So we want to do something which celebrates this end, which actually announces that this is a forest, this is a beautiful green area that you're coming to. So we want to develop that as a very nice plaza. So that when you come here, there is a plaza out here, and there is a very nice walking road over here, which could be very, uh, which could, which would be tree lined, and would come over here. All we try to do over here is that there is a lot of public land which is available, lot of land which is undefined, and all we are trying to do is take hold of all this land, define it, and give it proper activity and proper landscape. So. From here, we walk here, and then we have a large area which exists. Now, because of the fast-moving traffic, we never ever perceive these spaces. We all just drive by it, and we never know that this large areas exist around us. So what we are trying to do is reclaim all these areas and define them into nice public plazas. These could have kiosks. This could have uh, some public utilities. It could house a public, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, the council has developed um, a very nice smi smart toilets. So uh, we could use some uh, public facilities over here. And idea is to underpass, to go under the road and come out on the other side. But the underpass as it exists today is absolutely unusable. It is... All these underpasses are actually spaces that you never want to go into. They are dark, they are dingy, they smell, they are unsafe. So how do you make all these areas more user friendly? So idea is that don't make them, no, don't make people go in narrow staircases into badly lit tunnels. You create nice plazas. We do large step down plazas as it is shown here. Uh, okay, so these are some of the visuals that we've tried to show of the, the, the uh, metro area. This is the plaza that we've tried to create at the entrance of the Jahapana forest. This is the kind of space that we would like to create so that it's shady in summer. You use a lot of uh, indigenous trees and you create spaces which are very, very easy to use. So this is how we, we have envisaged it. And this is the kind of uh, spaces, the urban spaces that you create are all defined. You do not leave undefined areas at all because every undefined area is subject to encroachment and misuse. So when we come to the metros, uh, when we come to the underpass, we try and create very nice large step-down plazas, so that you actually go down in an open area rather than through a tunnel staircase. You go down in an airy light tunnel, 
and then the tunnel part is the only part that remains really sort of covered and underground till you come out on the other side into a similar plaza which gradually steps up these steps can be used very very effectively people sit on it people um, um, you can have small performances at times you can have music you can have kiosks you try and give it all the public uses that these areas can support now we are going to talk about an entrance node uh, there is an entrance node that exists there is a very large entrance that exists at um, the don bosco school into this jahanpana forest now what happens is that this is the main road out here when you see this is the main gk2 road uh, the w block road and this is a dda park which then is contiguous to the forest so if you see this dark green here is the forest and this part is actually a dda so what we want to do is not touch the forest really but we look at the dda park and the master plan actually defines certain public uses for all dda parks so you restrict yourself to all the uses which are defined in the master plan you do not violate the master plan and we try and create a, a area which is not closed because right now the entrance to this area is a brick wall and it is a gate and there are two toilet blocks which stink like mad so instead of that we are saying open up the wall create a nice public plaza integrate this with the road integrate this with the urban uh, urban situation outside now there are a lot of places a lot of vendors who uh, who uh, are outside on the road because the forest is used by a lot of people from the areas across they cut across over here and they come to work over there. a lot of the people work as domestic helps in houses in this space so there are a lot of vendors who who are stationed over there selling peanuts and bananas and small fruits and things like that so these are social needs that have to be accounted for and unless your planning process accounts for this there will be irregularities so what we have tried to do create areas over here which could be designated for street vendors where people can actually once they've cut across they can sit for 5 minutes they can regroup before they move on to their workplace we have tried to create uh, this is just a suggestion of some public areas in terms of exhibition spaces or it could be fnb areas or it could be amphitheaters yoga areas play areas for children so various activities so this is one concept there could be many many others and something like this you know amphitheaters are there or just shaded nice areas for people to sit and do yoga a lot of people do yoga in the morning and some fnb areas because fnb is a part and parcel of our life and unless you actually plan for it it becomes all unplanned and unorganized and from the road we said we could create a plaza open up the area and let people know there is there is something here rather than create high walls some more of the landscape proposals and a little bit of how we could do uh, we could use a lot of sustainable alternate energy for using uh, for for services in this area of course things like your harvesting your solar energy uh, and other aspects of sustainability would be built into the design process small kiosks so this is a uh, a way where we could actually start creating uh, activating areas which invite people into a green zones and create a seamless alternate green area for pedestrians and cyclists which gives them a safe access away from the hustle bustle of the traffic 
Now, the, another area that we had looked at was a little bit away from the South Delhi, which we all know, uh, more towards the West Delhi area, which is Harinagar. And uh, this was the space that we took, where there is a Tihar village, there was a Tihar lake over there, and there are some parks over there, so we decided to take that area and see what we could do with it. So there is a Tihar village there, there is a park here, which has a lake. And then we discovered that while studying that there are these series of greens. And again, if we apply the same principle, we could actually start connecting these greens and creating a nice meandering pedestrian path, uh, an alternate pedestrian movement across another very congested part of town. And then we also discovered that from here, if we actually traverse head in an overhead passageway across a little more, we could come to almost the central ridge. And to get into the central ridge, you could walk anywhere. You could walk to various parts of the city. And this is how we thought, you know, from the Tihar Lake area, from the park, you could go, you could go across and from this area and all the way into the central ridge. And that's how we envisaged it. So these really become like your, like New York has Central Park. This becomes your little Central Parks throughout Delhi. Because we are fortunate to have all this. All we have to do is recognize it and utilize it. And especially with the kind of pollution that we have today, to utilize these green areas and green lungs would be immensely beneficial. Uh, some of the activities that we thought we could put over, over here in these areas um, was using containers, which is now becoming a very popular concept. And start creating small public spaces so that these areas remain activated. You see, for any area to be safe, you need to have people. And to have people, you have to have enough destination created for them. You cannot expect people to just walk into an unlit, desolate place. So you have to create activation areas. And you could create these kind of spaces which have small FNB, you have cycle parking, you have NMV parking, and a place where people wa want to come to. So these become part and parcel of your green belt development. The, another thing that we sort of saw over here was this Tihar Lake. Now this Tihar Lake used to be a lake at one point. Now it's like a dried up pit. Now we said that why can't we reactivate this lake? The only way to reactivate it is to use, um, use recycled water. So in an attempt to use recycled water, it was first calculated how much water would be required. And then it was worked out as to how one could use the neighboring colonies. Because as we all know, more than 50% of Delhi does not have proper drainage and sewerage. Uh, we have all the sewage treatment plants, but most of them are not being used to capacity because we do not have the sewer lines leading to them. So here we said that what if we take the sewage treatment of the neighboring areas and try and use that to reactivate the lake over here. So a model has been developed to reactivate the lake and, and try and create a lakefront development, which is another destination. Because all these areas are all mid-market areas. They do not have any great source of entertainment outing. So creating these kind of destinations would be hugely beneficial. It would even drive the property market in a very healthy way. 
and we create uh, some, um, you know, little bit of boating, little bit of, uh, you know, water gardens, uh, FN areas, cycle tracks would then go through. And then, as I said, that if we went across certain part of the city, you could enter the Central Ridge. So this is what I wanted to actually bring to our notice today, that we as citizens of Delhi are fortunate to have huge amounts of green areas. But we do not recognize them, we lock them away. And we put our lives in danger by jostling with the traffic, getting onto the road. And if we somehow get together and see if these green areas are made accessible, opened up and controlled, because it's all up to us to do that, we could create hugely beneficial living environment for all of us, which is all what we need today. Thank you. So just like it said, to do something new and to do something different, you have to be unusual and you have to think different. That's what has been done by ma'am. So I would like to invite you once again on the stage and I invite Mr. Saurabh Mittal, MD and CEO of Green Lamb Industries Limited to express gratitude and say a thank you to ma'am, please. So I expect everybody to please clap loudly. I'd like to thank Sonali for taking off time and you know giving this wonderful educative you know speech and uh, you know imparting our understanding and rather deep understanding to all of y'all. So thank you, Sonali. My pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, ma'am, a big thank you to share your knowledge to say something which is so different. And thank you for being with Green Lamb. We really thank you for your support. I want to tell all of you here that there is something very fascinating at Green Lamb today. You just have to click a selfie with the Green Lamb logo, upload it on Facebook with the hashtag Green Lamb at ASTEC, and you can win a voucher from Green Lamb. Execute even faster. Teamwork. Build relationships. Pursue excellence. Lead to succeed. Learning. Be curious. Explore. Experiment more. We now present to you the all-new Greenland Industries Limited. Transforming spaces, enriching lives. With an experience of 20 years of beautifying spaces, Greenland Industries Limited offers one of the largest surfacing solution portfolios that includes high pressure laminates, compact sturdo, and decorative veneers. Exploring more ways to beautify the world. One of the largest producers of laminates in the world. We have an annual capacity of over 10 million sheets for laminates 
originating out of our state of the art plants. It is continuously innovating and constantly adding new products. Exploring more ways to beautify the world. While our natural decorative veneers astonish everybody with 4.2 million square meters installed capacity, we have now launched our first engineered wooden flooring brand with the astounding capacity of 1 million square meters, facilitating us to give you a wide range of brands such as Green Lamb Laminates, Clads, Sturdo and Mikasa. With a strong global network, Greenland Industries Limited is committed to provide international quality products to its customers through more than 12,000 distributors, dealers, sub-dealers and retailers. With a valued experience of over two decades, Greenland Industries has the significant part of the global market and remains the most preferred choice for architects, interior designers and the discerning consumers alike. A wider reach, a wider vision has taken the company beyond Asian roots, establishing Greenland Industries Limited as a promising and preferred brand globally. Present in over 100 countries, a strong global distribution network has 2,500 employees to cater to the global requirements. Today, Greenland Industries has to its credit the designation of being Asia's largest and the world's third largest laminate brand, along with the recognition of being the largest exporter of laminates in Asia for the last four years. But the success of Greenland Industries Limited doesn't lie in how vast its world is. It lies in how well it beautifies your world. palatial venues enchant you with their magnetic charisma. Trending in recent times, flaunting exteriors are fast replacing the skylines the world over. As always, it is the first impression that creates the last. Meet your offices, homes, corporate towers, shopping malls that look simply adorable.
Pradesh is Green Lamb state of the art manufacturing facility at Nalagar. Established way back in 2009, this facility boasts of capacities exceeding 1 million square meters of exterior grade compact laminate panels per annum. cladding solution in myriad hues and designs, we present to you the Green Lamb Clad, the innovative and revolutionary way of beautifying your facades like never before. And making this possible is our superior GLE technology that ensures precision, perfection and performance, integrating world-class technologies Harnessing the best of human resource and state-of-the-art R&D, Green Lamb Clads are designed to withstand any vagary of nature year after year and are stamped with a seal of assurance that guarantees 10 years of minimum life. The groundbreaking GLE technology adds on to the superiority of Green Lamb Clads such as excellent UV performance that prevents the exteriors from color fading over time. Its high quality imported exterior grade and specialized decor paper gives it a superb edge. So do its extreme light stable pigments and special chemicals in it. Extreme weather stability makes it perfectly suitable in extreme weather conditions ranging from as low as minus 80 degrees centigrade to as high as 180 degrees centigrade. A green and environment friendly product which retards heat externally and keeps the interiors relatively cooler resulting in almost 30% energy saving. retardant, dust and solvent resistant, exceptional chemical resistance, high anti-soiling properties, impact resistance and scratch resistance make green lamb clads one of its kind. Adding to this is the ease with which these panels can be cleaned. Resistance to corrosion. High anti-static property. Frost resistance. Anti-graffiti property. And resistance to acid rains. Make
after the sessions which have been very great now the next session is by miss lorraine brickdale regarding a very fabulous topic which we always keep on thinking that is what's in and what's out and why what is in fashion what is trendy what is not trendy so miss lorraine would be here in a while to share her views on the important topic so i request all of you to please be seated and please be here to meet miss lauren brigdale design head green lamb industries a warm welcome to all the professionals present here a very very warm welcome that you are here at the largest setup of green lamb industries which is at astec 2015 and now the next session is by lauren brigdale so i request everybody to please be here agar aap janna chahte hain kya trendy hai kya fashionable hai what is in and what you need to use to be truly fashionable to make your property beautiful and to make it look very fascinating please be here to attend the next session give us the motivation and vision to lead ahead with trust believe your beliefs test them perform to win performance push forward take risks create the impossible speed and agility be quick think fast execute even faster teamwork build relationships pursue excellence lead to succeed learning be curious explore experiment more we 
now present to you the all-new Greenland Industries Limited. Transforming spaces, enriching lives. With an experience of 20 years of beautifying spaces, Greenland Industries Limited offers one of the largest surfacing solution portfolios that includes high-pressure laminates, compact sturdo, and decorative veneers. Exploring more ways to beautify the world. One of the largest producers of laminates in the world. We have an annual capacity of over 10 million sheets for laminates originating out of our state-of-the-art plants. It is continuously innovating and constantly adding new products. Exploring more ways to beautify the world. While our natural decorative veneers astonish everybody with 4.2 million square meters installed capacity, we have now launched our first engineered wooden flooring brand with the astounding capacity of 1 million square meters, facilitating us to give you a wide range of brands such as Greenlam Laminates, Clads, Sturdo and Mikasa. With a strong global network, Greenland Industries Limited is committed to provide international quality products to its customers through more than 12,000 distributors, dealers, sub-dealers and retailers. With a valued experience of over two decades, Greenland Industries has the significant part of the global market and remains the most preferred choice for architects, interior designers and the discerning consumers alike. A wider reach, a wider vision has taken the company beyond Asian roots, establishing Greenland Industries Limited as a promising and preferred brand globally. Present in over 100 countries, a strong global distribution network has 2,500 employees to cater to the global requirements. Today, Greenland Industries has to its credit the designation of being Asia's largest and the world's third largest laminate brand, along with the recognition of being the largest exporter of laminates in Asia for the last four years. But the success of Greenland Industries Limited doesn't lie in how vast its world is. It lies in how well it beautifies your world.
time and again that grandeur and magnificence rest outwards and later inwards. Facades of monuments, palaces, palatial venues enchant you with their magnetic charisma. Trending in recent times, flaunting exteriors are fast replacing the skylines the world over. As always, it is the first impression that creates the last. Be it your offices, homes, corporate towers, shopping malls that look simply adorable. Get ready to clad your exterior surfaces with strokes of imagination. Dotting the absorbed blue skyline with pristine beauty and, of course, the beautiful exteriors. Nestled amid sylvan surroundings of Himachal Pradesh is Green Lamb State of the Art Manufacturing Facility at Nalagar. Established way back in 2009, this facility boasts of capacities exceeding 1 million square meters of exterior grade compact laminate panels per annum. ultra-modern revolutionary exterior cladding solution in myriad hues and designs, we present to you the Green Lamb Class. The innovative and revolutionary way of beautifying your facades like never before. And making this possible is our superior GLE technology that ensures precision, perfection and performance. Integrating world-class technologies, harnessing the best of human resource and state-of-the-art R&D, Green Lamb Clads are designed to withstand any vagary of nature year after year and are stamped with a seal of assurance that guarantees 10 years of minimum life. The groundbreaking GLE technology adds on to the superiority of Green Lamb Clads such as excellent UV performance that prevents the exteriors from color fading over time. Its high quality imported exterior grade and specialized decor paper gives it a superb edge. So do its extreme light stable pigments and special chemicals in it. Extreme weather stability makes it perfectly suitable in extreme weather conditions ranging from as low as minus 80 degrees centigrade to as high as 180 degrees centigrade. A green and environment friendly product which retards heat externally and keeps the interiors relatively cooler, resulting in almost 30% energy saving. retardant, dust and solvent resistant, exceptional chemical resistance, high anti-soiling properties, impact resistance and scratch resistance make green lamb clads one of its kind. Adding to this is the ease with which these panels can be cleaned. Resistance to corrosion. High anti-static property. Frost resistance. Anti-graffiti property. And resistance to acid rains. Making Greenland clad an obvious choice for stunning exteriors. 
let's take you through the most suggested installation process of green lamp clads step by step. Wall survey. We need to check the wall type first to ensure correct fastening process. For different walls like ash brick wall, hollow wall, red wall, MS wall, concrete wall, we need different processes for green lamp clad installation. Mark the vertical line for the frame. Start from the corner. Make parallel markings on the entire wall at regular distance of 600 millimeters. Use first dead load bracket on 300 millimeters from the ground for proper alignment of the wall. Use 10 mm fastener for fixing the brackets. MS brackets are of two types. Wind load brackets which take care of thermal expansion, heat expansion and earthquake resulting in overall facade protection and dead load brackets which transfer the load to wall which eventually is transferred to the earth thus protecting facade. These brackets should be of the size 85 mm in width, 50 mm in depth and 5 mm in thickness and should be placed at intervals of 1500 mm in vertical. Use second wind load brackets after the distance of 1500 mm from first brackets. Use third wind load brackets after 1500 mm from second brackets. After fixing of brackets, fix the aluminum box section in brackets with the help of SS nut bolts of diameter 10 mm. After fixing the first vertical frame, start second section at maximum distance of 600 mm. All framing will follow the same procedure. After framing is completed, check the bubble level of the frame, horizontally and vertically. After framing is completed, cut the sheet as per your requirement. Make a first drill hole on the sheet at a corner. Distance from the corner is 40 mm from top and 20 mm from side. Diameter of the drill is 5.1 mm. After first drill, mark the distance for second drill. Maximum distance is 600 mm horizontally and vertically. Diameter of the other drill is 8.5 mm. Once all drill holes are completed, start fixing the sheet on the frame. To fix the rivet, you need to make a 5 mm drill in aluminum box section and fix it on the frame with the help of the rivets. After 5 mm drill, you may fix the sheet. You must leave 6 mm horizontal and vertical gaps between each panel. is ready to rise it's shine, a request to all of you agar aapko koi bhi brown color ka ladies purse ya wallet milta hai to please yahan pe leke aa jaye unke andar pooja naam ka id card aapko milega it is a brown color wallet brown color ka purse hai kisi ka kho gaya hai please wo yahan pe leke aa jaye And I request all of you to please be seated because we have a session that is going to start. 
by Ms. Lauren Rigdale. So, everybody, I request all of you to please be seated for the session. Aap sabhi please yahan baith jayen. Is session ka pura faida uthane ke liye, pure benefits ke liye. So, it's a request to everybody, please sit down to attend the session. Fantastic piece. 
please give them a big round of applause. And now as we move on from the silver to the ultimate award, that's a gold award, please welcome. Gentlemen, please stay with us, the presenters of the awards, ladies too, ma'am too. Please welcome Mr. Goyal of Omax to join us on stage. Small Goyal, thank you for being with us here. For the moment we've been waiting for, the Design Wall Gold winner. The Design Wall Gold winner. The award color is gold and the winning uh, entry is... The winner is... Green. Green Lamb Industries Limited. So this year the gold goes to Green Lamb Industries. Congratulations Green Lamb. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, sudden silence. Get the mass and not talk to you, hey, right? You're saying. I think it's too cold to clap, right? Thank you so much, Miss Gregorio. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for gracing this awards and making it a special award at this. We'd like to thank all our uh, finalists. We also like to thank all the participants and all the innovators. We have a businessman here who deals with different kinds of woods. So let us talk to him and ask him, what is Green Lamb? So, what do you want to say Green Lamb? Hello, Sir Sikal Ji. I've used the Green Lamb. It's a very multinational brand. ते कोई हमने होटल में भी यूज़ किया है सब अच्छा ब्रांड है आज हम एक्सिबिशन में आए हैं और हमने उनके पूछा कि कोई आप नया ब्रांड आपका आया तो दिखाओ इन्होंने हमने विनियर दिखाया जो रेडी है पॉलिश बिल्कुल उसमें पेंट का भी पेंटर का भी काम खत्म हो जाता है फिर वैसे भी वो जो क्वालिटी उन्होंने दी दी है पॉलिश में वो क्वालिटी पेंटर कभी ला ही नहीं सकता इसलिए बहुत अच्छा लगा एक इन्होंने पे नया माइक आया जो स्टोन लुक है वो वो भी हमें अच्छा लगा मार्केट जब आएगा तो हम लगाएंगे पहले भी वो लगाया इनका मैक का विनियर भी वो लगाया होटल में रेजिडेंशियल प्रोजेक्ट में सो आपके कस्टमर्स क्या मांगते हैं बेसिकली जब आपके पास आते हैं व्हाट डू दे आस्क फॉर वो मांगते हैं ब्रांड ब्रांड हो अच्छा ब्रांड हो जो मार्केट में चल रहा है बस यही सो डू यू थिंक ग्रीन लैम इज अ बिग ब्रांड ब्रांड मल्टीनेशनल ब्रांड मल्टीनेशनल ब्रांड सो सर वी हैव समथिंग स्पेशल हियर एक सेल्फी खींचेंगे हम ग्रीन लैम के साथ और आपको एक गिफ्ट वाउचर मिलेगा सो प्लीज यूज योर फोन एंड क्लिक अ सेल्फी Businessman here who has been using green lamb since many years. Let us ask him what is green lamb. Sir, what do you want to say about green lamb? I have been working with green lamb for last two years. I have been working with a thrice dealer. But if I consider all the laminates, green lamb is definitely an innovative product. The clats have recently launched. It has a very good response to the market. For exterior use, बहुत अच्छा प्रोडक्ट है इसके अलावा अभी मैंने निकासा जो इनकी वुडन फ्लोरिंग्स आ रही हैं वो भी देखी 100 परसेंट डिफरेंट हैं और कंपनीज से लाइफ लॉन्ग लास्टिंग हैं तो सेटिस्फैक्ट्री प्रोडक्ट्स हैं कस्टमर एंड से भी और एस ए डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर एंड से भी वेरी नाइस और आपने देखा होगा यहाँ एस टेक में सबसे बड़ा बूथ ग्रीन लैम का है वॉट यू हैव टू से अबाउट द ह्यूज सेटअप डेफिनेटली जो लोग बड़े होते हैं वो बूथ भी बड़े रखते हैं तो एक ब्रांड बड़ा है तो एक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज उस पर बड़ी हैं और उसने हंड्रेड परसेंट फुलफिल रिजल्ट दिए हैं सो आप फ्यूचर में कौन सा प्रोडक्ट है जो और ज़्यादा यूज़ करने वाले हैं अभी क्लैट्स में देख के आया हूँ जो एच पी एल शीट्स की तरह यूज़ हो रहा है एक्सटीरियर में तो डेफिनेटली उसका रिस्पॉन्स अच्छा आ रहा है मार्केट में और उसे हम और अभी और बूस्टअप करेंगे सो सर कस्टमर क्या मांगते हैं बेसिकली क्या डिमांड है कस्टमर की कस्टमर क्वालिटी के साथ कॉम्प्रोमाइज़ नहीं करना चाहते और ग्रीन लैम से 100 परसेंट वो चीज़ हमें मिलती है और क्वालिटी के साथ साथ एक जो कंपनी की रिलायबिलिटी होती है वो भी बहुत बड़ा मैटर करती है तो वो सब चीज़ें ग्रीन लैम के साथ एसोसिएट्स हैं ओके सर सो वी हैव समथिंग स्पेशल हियर आप एक सेल्फी खींचेंगे एंड वी विल गिव अ गिफ्ट वाउचर टू यू फ्राम ग्रीन लैम सो प्लीज़ टेक आउट योर फोन Facebook app. I have a few 
few architects here who have been working in the industry. Let's ask them what they say about Green Lamb. आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे Green Lamb के बारे में? Actually, the best thing is like they are using everything natural, natural season. I mean, I, they had idea that timber could be available in such main textures. They were in smoke tinders, and they're also you know uh, we can apply polish. They're reliable too. They're natural, but this is natural. They're better than ceramic, I think. Or uh, what does the customer ask for today? I think it's the uh, reliability, the trust uh, in the brand. That's uh, I think. And what do you have to say about the largest booth here at Aestek, which is Green Lamb? Yeah, I think the representation is also very nice. I mean, it's, it's a very catchy booth actually. I think, and uh, I've been going through materials, and I find them uh, really interesting actually. Okay, so we have a special offer here. We are giving you a gift voucher. Please use your phone to click a selfie. What do you do? Uh, this is Manchu from IT Squared, and we are channel partners of Sab. And this is what I have. Okay, so what do you have to say about Green Lamb? Green Lamb is a huge organization. It deals with laminates, mica, floors, furnitures, very good wood and very good interiors they have, as comparison to other organizations. And uh, I think they are going with uh, well decorative materials, and I hope they go forward with. more of that so what is the customer demand in today's date see customer need that his house should look like all unique and uh, it's on the flavor of the person like he wants a sober house he wants a decorative thing like how kind of interiors he want so it depends on customer but yes green lamp provides the customer's requirement with very huge things no they understand the customer requirement and they provide it the way they want it very right so am um, you are at the largest the biggest setup at aestek 2015 which is green lamb how did you like the setup this is very huge setup and seriously i like it okay now please click a selfie because we want to give you a gift voucher as you click a selfie with green lamb gentleman here at aestek 2015 and let's ask him what does he do so what do you do uh basically we do uh, corporate interiors and uh, we are using green lamb for last uh, 10 years uh, different project like we we are using ply uh, your mdf your uh, laminates veneers and all the materials and uh, so uh, does green lamb provide you everything that you need as a customer uh, right now yeah it's almost 95% you can say we are getting most of the products तो ये सबसे बड़ा सेटअप है इस टू 2015 में ग्रीन लैम बूथ का ये सेटअप आपको कैसा लगा सेटअप इज गुड योर योर डिजाइन इज गुड इवन इवन आई सी सो मेनी प्रोडक्ट प्रोडक्ट योर न्यू प्रोडक्ट आल्सो एंड विल डेफिनेटली यूज इन फ्यूचर सो व्हाट यू हैव टू से अबाउट द न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स इट्स गुड इट्स रियली गुड इवन द डिटेलिंग इज गुड तो विल डेफिनेटली ट्राई टू यूज इन आवर फ्यूचर प्रोजेक्ट So sir we have a offer here we are giving you a gift voucher from Green Lamb you have to click a selfie with your mobile phone and upload it on Facebook so please click a selfie phone se professional here who who is at aestek 2015 let us ask him what a customer demands from green lamb so being a customer what is a customer demand from green lamb sir green lamb is a very good company and uh, actually we are in from the same field so we are providing the glues also which are used by the green also okay okay and uh, this is the biggest setup at aestek 2015 how do you like the setup very good and uh, very nicely setup 
बींग कस्टमर आपने वास्तु शास्त्र जरूर सुना होगा डू यू बिलीव इन वास्तु शास्त्र या सो सो व्हाट आर द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ वास्तु शास्त्र ई विल जो मतलब वास्तु शास्त्र से क्या है कि हम लोग अपना अच्छा ग्रो कर सकते हैं एंड ओके एनी सजेशंस टू ग्रीन लैंड माय बेस्ट विश इज फॉर ग्रीन लैंड ओके सो यू कैन से ग्रीन लैंड इज द बेस्ट या ग्रीन लैंड इज द बेस्ट एंड सर वी हैव अ स्पेशल थिंग वी आर गिविंग यू अ वाउचर फॉर थाउजेंड रुपीस फ्रॉम ग्रीन लैंड सो प्लीज टेक आउट योर फोन एंड क्लिक अ सेल्फी Tyagi business head Florings is here let's ask him what is the review about the Aestec 2015 Green Lamp booth so what are the customers asking for this year well first of all they In a few minutes we are about to start the session by Miss Lauren Brigdale so I request all of you to please be seated please be here to know what's in and what's out and what is trending so I request everybody all of you here please be here to attend this session
स्पेशल सेशन बाय मिस लॉरेन ब्रिगडेल डिजाइन हैंड डिजाइन हैड ग्रीन लैम इंडस्ट्रीज शी इज गोइंग टू डिस्कस वॉट्स इन वॉट्स आउट वॉट्स ट्रेंडी वॉट्स फैशनेबल सो अ वॉम वेलकम टू मिस लॉरेन ब्रिगडेल मैम प्लीज कैन वी प्लीज हेयर इट फॉर मिस लॉरेन क्लैप प्लीज थैंक यू Hello, I'm Lorraine, and um, I'm the design head for Green Lamb. I'm also an interior designer, and uh, I'd like to share. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, they can't hear me. What's in, what's out, and why? Um, things don't happen just by chance. They happen because people are involved, and trends are about people and about people's choices. Things come into fashion, and they go out of fashion. And I, I wonder if you've ever asked yourself why that would be. Um, I ask myself that question all the time because it's part of my job. But the thing is that things come into fashion and they go out of fashion because we change our minds. We make decisions about our lives and we decide what we like and what we don't like. So what's happening now, something that's happening now is we're now seeing a resurgence of clean browns. And what's interesting is it's not just in interiors, it's exterior, interior, everywhere. And a lot of um, automobiles, motorbikes, um, exterior finishes, but also interior finishes and uh, fabrics, tiles. The brown um, colour is starting to move back into our life. And there's a reason for that, which you'll discover as we move through, um, uh, through this presentation. So trends are not just about colour and design, they're about what we like. It's about how we make our choices and we all know that we would have seen something new maybe in the shops we've seen it and we said no I don't like that but then after some time our friends buy it we see someone who might be famous wearing that particular thing and after some time we get used to it and then one day we find ourselves actually making a decision to buy that particular item ourselves when once we said, no, we hate it, we don't like it, we'll never get it. So it's a bit about human nature. Trends are very much about human nature. And it's about people seeing what other people have and eventually making a decision to buy that for themselves. So we see something and we either immediately like it or we eventually get to the point where we like it and then we decide that, that new kitchen that we bought, say, five years ago or ten years ago that we loved, now maybe we have to think about putting a new kitchen in or buying a new pair of shoes or a new handbag or a new car. So that's what happens with trends. What's really interesting for me and for people who are a part of the design industry is what actually happens about trends. What is it that makes a trend and what does a trend do when you leave it all on its own and let stuff happen to it? So this is, this is an innovation adoption cycle. It's, it's, it's not something that was invented by me, but it's one of my um, go-to pieces of information when I'm thinking about new designs coming in, going out, what they're doing, what they're likely to do. This is a piece of information that I have permanently in my head. So when we start with a new trend, the first people who choose a new trend are called the innovators. And they are the avant-garde, it's another word for it, but they are people who, they will choose something because they like it. 
They will not choose something because they think their next door neighbour likes it. They won't choose it because they've seen someone fashionable wearing it. They're the first people, they're the first ones to make, to make those decisions. They make those decisions purely, purely on their own gut feel. They decide they like it. They don't care whether you like it. They're the first ones. And they're a very small percentage. But what's interesting is what happens around them. Surrounding the avant-garde or the innovators, we have the early adopters. And I call them, they're my aha moment. Because when you bring something very new into the marketplace, a lot of people, they, they sort of, they don't understand it or they, they think they don't like it and they're not going to make, take any risks on it. But surrounding those first people, those innovation, um, those innovators, the avant-garde, surrounding them are a group of people who are there purely to see what the avant-garde do. They will see the new things and they will pick them up. Now, they're not capable of making those decisions themselves. They're not going to be the one who makes the decision first, but they recognise it when someone else does. And so they're very important to us, any of us who are in, in the interiors industry, because they are the ones that get the ball rolling. If the avant-garde choose something that's two way out, this second level of people are not going to pick it up and go with it. So these early adopters are the ones who really start um, bringing the product into the marketplace and you start to see someone wearing a particular um, colour of sneakers or with a pattern on them, one of those checkered black and white coloured sneakers, those sort of things. They're the first people who actually become quite visible in the marketplace. They're not a lot of people and they are the people that everyone else thinks of as being fashionable when in fact they've they picked it up from the avant-garde. Now those early adopters, they're, they're very important because they get out into the marketplace, they get out into our world that we, that we live in and they start showing everyone else what they, what they have, what they like and other people are now watching them and other people are a part of the early majority. That's another name that we have for the next section of people. Now the early majority, you can tell by the, by the name of it, the early majority are quite a big percentage. Um, they're the ones who, they do notice a trend and they see it and they go for it. They don't need to be convinced, but they need to see it as a trend. And they are the ones when, when something is picked up by the early majority, then people are starting to understand that this trend is a part of our lifestyle. This is when we start saying, yay, we've, we've, got, a, we've got a successful product and we can tell by the sales. But the other thing about the early majority is that's actually at the peak of, um, of the sales of a particular item or the use of a particular item because pretty soon after the early majority um, comes to its peak, that item will start to um, retract. Now it depends what it is and it depends um, on the particular colour or item, how quickly it gets to that point. But that's, that's the peak and things start to go downhill after there, but they don't generally go downhill quickly because they're followed by the late majority. The late majority are made up of people who also think that they're very fashionable and they're not. <laughs> they're lovely because they see what everyone else has and they want it as well and they feel safe by choosing something that their friends have got, their, their neighbour might have, they might see a lot of adverts for it. They feel very safe and they're very, very happy to buy that particular thing because it is a, it is a, um, a fully accepted part of the marketplace. So those two, the early majority and the late majority, are very, very important. Um, uh, I guess they're not targets for us, but in the end, they become very important to um, anyone who's producing a product. The last, and, and you've got to love them, the poor things, they're called laggards. 
Um, it's a terrible name and I never want to be called that, but they're actually responsible for the long tail that we have in all of our laminate um, designs at some point. They're the ones who will only buy something when they have seen it for years and they just will not take a risk at all in any way. And when we finally delete something from our range because hardly anyone's buying it, one of those laggards is going to come to us and say, you don't have it anymore and I wanted it. And they'll get very upset because it's taken them such a long time to get to the point where they love it that they only love it when it's time for it to go. So that's a bit of a description of what happens with innovations. And the interesting thing for me is that by the time we get to about the late majority or the early majority, we've already got new things coming in at the stage of the avant-garde. It's really relevant to um, laminate designs, laminate ranges and colours. So if, if we go straight into trends to that, now you have a bit of an understanding about what actually happens with a trend. Um, what's, what's, what is influencing things? One of the things, there's lots of different things that will influence trends. Modernism, it has a huge influence at the moment. Everyone has a different opinion about what, what modernism is. True modernism is, is from the 1930s and the 1940s, and it can sneak into the 1950s. But a lot of people think of modernism as also being right up until the 1970s. So those areas are all influencing the designs, the colours, the way we put things together currently. And you can see it, you go shopping, you can see some of the designs, you can start to see, they are from our past, there's really nothing completely new. So with modernism, when we look to today, we change it slightly. We don't just bring back the fashions from before, we never do that, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what it is that we're bringing back. It's never identical to the way it was before. But what we're bringing um, into design today from modern, modernism is, is the shapes, the straight lines, combined with curved corners and oblique shapes. And um, I guess uh, splayed legs and black metal together with wood and interesting shapes, painted colours, patterns. Um, Greens and oranges are very popular. And you can see very um, modern contemporary things that have got a strong modernism um, direction influence showing. But modern, modernism certainly isn't the only trend. And um, so, you, you know, just trying to think of how many different trends are running currently. Contemporary, Scandinavian, industrial, in, indie, eclectic, Japanese, it can go on and on. Um, but for me, um, a trend is less about a particular style and more about the way people put colour together. The way people put colour together, it's the first thing they, they think of before they really think of anything else. And it's how they make their decisions in the end is colour. So smoky woods are important, are an important trend it's the first one that I'm talking about because it's a most, I guess it's, it's probably the most recent colour trend in terms of wood grains and it grew out of the grey tone trend. But smoky woods actually comes from smoked veneers and we know a lot about veneers at Greenlam. We have amazing um, range of uh, veneer styles and of course laminate patterns they grow from veneer patterns. Um, that, uh, that's how laminate started. In the beginning, it was to um, provide something that looked like a veneer, and that is, that's not changed over the years. We've increased the t types of designs we have. Now we have stones and marbles and tex textiles and um, abstract patterns, but the basis of any range is always um, wood. So the smoky wood grains the trend for that comes directly from um, smoky veneers, true smoky veneers. And you can see how easily they are to um, put them together into any interior scheme. A smoky smoky coloured veneers are gorgeous and very sophisticated. Um, other 
Another direction in uh, wood grains is a natural wood colour. It's a really strong direction and it comes from uh, people's desire for, for comfort and uh, a feeling of um, security, I think, where we look to nature and we don't even know we're doing it, actually. We just, we just sort of feel a little bit more peaceful when we have uh, nature surrounding us. So that's why when we see things like um, natural wood grains in, in laminates, um, they become a part of any, any, any year, any trend that's happening, natural wood grains are always there in one way or another. And they go beautifully with the grey trend. They're a, they're a lovely complement to grey. So the influence of grey, then I've spoken about it a couple of times, but the influence of grey is strong. It's been, it's been around internationally um, for about five years, I guess, and it's growing here in India more and more. And it's, it's so wonderful because it's not one colour. I'm not talking about one grey. I'm talking about colours that have grey in it and grey that has colour in it. And it can be anything from a steely blue grey through to a very, very warm smoky grey to a really pale, pale grey and then into a maybe a dark slate grey. So grey has lots and lots of different um, iterations and it makes it easy to use in an, in an interior because you can always find something that works with grey. And then also when we think about if we're using grey, we're using grey wood grains and they're smoky grey or they're clear grey, whatever they are, as soon as you start finding something that works, then you start seeing it arriving in other things. So lots and lots of stone patterns, lots of marbles and granites are in grey tones now. If you have a look at some of the tile um, booths that are um, at the show here, they're just overloaded with grey. And, you know, grey is not going away. It's not the only thing that people choose, not by a long way, but it's not going away. And the reason it's not going away is because it's not one colour, it's many colours and easy to use. So we start doing things like seeing how it works with all sorts of different patterns and all sorts of different combinations. So our smoky tones, you can see from here, your smoky tones with the grey influence in them, these ones have mostly got a, a brown um, tone, but there's an underlay of grey in there at all times. And the same with the wood grains. Some of them look more brown, some of them look more grey, some of them even start looking a little bit white. But you can see that tonal, that undertone. So brown, as I said, brown's coming back into fashion and brown can be very warm and very light. It can also be quite dark and it can also be influenced a little bit by grey, although these colours that I'm showing you are not. But brown is something we're feeling very comfortable with too. Now, to talk a little bit about colour, c colour is amazing at the moment. I like to think about it as chroma quench and the reason for that is when we use a lot of neutral colours, either browns or um, whites and greys, eventually we turn to a point where we want to have colour in our life and so we can do that really easily with neutral colour schemes and we can bring in all sorts of colours together. So what we're seeing now is lots of colours put together, not just one monochrome colour, we're seeing reds and blues and greens all thrown in together. Of course, they're balanced, but they, they just look amazing in some of the ways that, that these colours are put together. And um, you need a very neutral background for them to work because they can be so strong. So we can see here um, how we have uh, a whole variety of um, browns and going through the reds, orange and yellows and the blue greens and that's because we have so many colours to choose from. people are very adventurous with their colour choices. But think about how you put colour together 
there's a couple of easy ways you can put to colour together. One, one of them is called complementary, and you just look on the colour wheel and you choose from one side of the colour wheel and the opposite, and those colours will automatically go together. Or if you choose an analogous colour scheme, you're looking for any colours which are together on the colour wheel. So blue, blue-green and green work beautifully together in an interior as an accent um, range of colours. So we talked about brown wood grains. Of course, we've got brown in a solid colour. It's, it's such a long time since we've really had brown in interiors just as a colour. And it's coming back, it's coming in furniture, it's coming in paint colours, um, it's coming in, in, in everything really, um, in leather, in laminate, of course. And from brown come the natural hues that move um, into our, I guess, into our peripheral. Because we're looking at brown, we then look at the other colours that automatically go with them. And so you see these beautiful mustard colours um, and the, the um, very sort of earthy yellows, the terracottas. And then when you add a little bit of black to all of that, you've got an amazing natural um, colour scheme that is just brilliant and alive. This one I particularly like. This colour looks really vivid on the screen and that is exactly what it was like in reality. When we walked in there and we saw this, it was like, oh, wow, how can, how can people live with such strong colour? You're not going to really paint your walls yellow and have blue and green things hanging on the walls. But this shows how strongly colour and strong colour is becoming a part of our life. When a retail or in a wholesale furniture company, really wants to show strong colour like that, you know that there's a meaning in there. So we go from the greens, we go into the beautiful rich reds, the really blood reds, the terracottas, the dark oranges. They're so rich and gorgeous. And then we're also going to the opposite because whenever we have something strong, we go for something soft. And so you have an area of pastel shades, and pastels are, are the opposite. They're this, the other strong area of colour. And the thing with both of those, with strong colours and pastel colours, is that you can put a variety of different colours together. You don't just put red and say you've got a colour scheme, some red and grey together with a bit of white. It's not a colour scheme. You add beautiful things in to each other that highlight together and you build it up, just like you build up a sandcastle. So recycled finishes, we're still using them. They've been popular for a while. They're starting to go down onto the sort of the downhill side of the trend curve, but um, we are still using them. We're still seeing them, and we've actually seen them starting to creep into tile finishes, finishes recently, which is interesting. So maybe that'll extend the life a little bit. But... Um, Part of the whole recycle idea is um, this uh, love affair that we have at the moment with concrete. And we love the way concrete looks, whether it's real concrete or whether it's not. If it's laminate concrete, we love that equally. And we love the way it looks in an interior. So we see it continually in commercial spaces. We see it at these sort of shows all the time. In, in recent years, but we see it in residence, residential spaces as well, in kitchens, um, for kitchen counters, and what used to be thought of as something rough and cold and horrible is now thought of something desirable, so things, things certainly do change. And we're just seeing concrete finishes continually, we're seeing more warm co concrete colours and also um, more of the cold, um, rough, rough screed concrete finishes as well. Another trend, another big trend is textiles. And it's not just um, in real textiles, it's in laminates, it's in tiles, it's in uh, wallpapers and all sorts of different finishes. And you can get, you can get uh, leather that has a textile pattern printed on it. So you're actually looking at a piece of leather that looks like it's a woven piece of fabric. So textile trend is interesting because it used to be that we would only use textile in something soft. That idea is gone now. 
we love the way a textile pattern um, fills the space in a way that's different to a wood grain. And so we find that we are looking at some stronger textile patterns and some more subtle textile patterns that we can use on the inside and the outside of um, our cupboard spaces. And some of these are uh, things that I've seen at um, recent international shows. This one in, in, this one, um, in particular is just a beautiful um, Almira with, when you open the doors of that, it's got a different textile pattern on the interior. It's got that lovely little hint of red there as well. Here are some of the um, green lamb textile patterns that we've introduced to our ranges, and you can see that there opens up opens up many um, options. Digital design is important. It's uh, growing. It's a growing. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a growing trend. It's a growing product, though, um, and it's something that actually provides. Uh, the ability for a designer or a company that's trying to create a branding look for their, say for their cafe or their shop, provides the ability for them to do that in a really functional way. The thing with the digital, digital um, laminate is that you can actually print whatever you like. All you've got to do is have that JPEG file in the right size and we can get it printed for you in laminate. But you can see some of these um, tabletops that I've seen. Um, these were all in Milan. Um, maybe in Germany, not in Milan. Some of them are, in, some are from Milan, some of them are from Germany. Um, but different textile um, digital patterns. And so you can see how you can use digital as a branding um, product as well and create a look um, in your interior based on something that's completely different to everyone else that only you can have. And of course, because we're so innovative here at Green Lamb, we've developed digital printed veneer, which is a pretty amazing innovation and it's very beautiful. And if you haven't seen it, it's over on, over on the wall over there. It's very gorgeous. So textures, the last thing I want to talk to you about is textures. Um, I think it's the last thing. I'm not sure. Um, but textures is very, very important in laminates. And we've actually matured as far as the way we use text uh, textures. We no longer just say we want a texture for the sake of it being a texture. Now we choose a texture based on the fact that it enhances whatever the pattern is. It creates whatever the pattern is. It doesn't override what's under, underneath it. So a higher level of detail has to be um, afforded to this that the gloss levels and the matte levels are correct so that you actually get something that creates something very beautiful rather than overshadowing what, you, what you're looking at. And this one, this is our interweave collection. This is actually done on um, solid colours. And you can see the glints of light that happen in um, behind those lines. And one of the reasons I really liked this one was that it feels as if there's depth there. It feels as if you can, you can almost look in and see into it. And then we use textures for varying things. One of them is to make something more functional um, in a different uh, texture. So sometimes when we've got a finish and it's in a gloss finish, it's not, um, it's not acceptable to use it everywhere, for example, on a horizontal surface. And so we can change that by just changing the texture and making it a more um, hardy, hardy texture, but one that also brings up the sparkle in the design. So that's pretty much all I have to share with you about trends and to do with Green Lamb today. I'm Lorraine and I'm the design head at Green Lamb. We put a lot into developing our innovative products. Green Lamb is very proud of, of the, the um, developments that we make 
and we make them for our customer so that our customer can create their interior landscape. So please take your time and have a look around at the stand before you leave and explore some of the design trends that, we've, that I've spoken about. Thank you. So this was really something which we were looking forward to know the latest trends and something that looks really nice. I would like to thank Ms. Lauren for sharing the insights. Please clap loudly for her saying a thank you from all of us. Thank you.